Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am your host, the number one Viskins fan extraordinaire, Adam Boyer. Thank you so much for coming back again and watching the channel today. Today should be an awesome video. We're continuing with our way too early prediction series. Didn't get even half of them finished before the draft, as was my intention, but oh well, we're going to continue with way too early predictions, and today we are doing my division, that of the Washington Commanders, the NFC East. We're going to be doing game-by-game -game predictions for the Commanders, and then just broad predictions at all, as a whole for the rest of the East. So let's get right down to it. We're going to start off with game-by-game -game predictions for the Commanders. Week one, I'm going to keep this moving reasonably quickly since so I don't want this video, you know, becoming 10 minutes long. Um, we have versus Jaguars. Uh, that's going to be a win, I have. Week two, at Lions, win. And then at week three, spoiler, uh, spoiler alert, I have a splitting games with the Eagles versus Eagles at home. I have the wins. We start off 3-0, hit a little bit of a slump as we go at Cowboys with a loss versus Titans with a loss. So... The Titans, um, this game, I'm not convinced the Titans are going to be super good this year. But I feel like this is just one of those games where the Commanders are going to randomly struggle. And so I do have them dropping this one, dropping our record to 3-2. and two. Uh, Then we go at Bears, a win. Versus Packers, win. Um, at Colts, a loss. I think the Colts are going to do very well with Matt Ryan this year. Versus Vikings, I do have a loss there. Um, I don't think we're going to beat the Packers and Vikings. It was really a toss-up for me. And I thought that one team was going to win Packers, one team was going to win Vikings. I just didn't know exactly which team uh, teams would get the win and which would get the L. But I went ahead and gave the win to the pack, uh, our win to the Packers, and had us losing to the Vikings. So uh, then, uh, to complete our three-game losing streak, we go at Eagles, and I have a loss there. But then we hit a little bit of a winning streak. We go at Texans, win. At Falcons, win. At Giants, win. Then we hit a late bye week. Then we're versus Giants, another win. At 49ers, loss. Versus Browns, loss. But we close out the season on a high note with a win at home against the Cowboys to keep us in the race for the NFC East. So ultimately, that ends us with a record of 10 and seven, a ceiling I have of 15 and two. Now listen, I do not think the commanders are going to go 15 and two. I just want to throw that out there. I think right now that is our ceiling, the very best we could possibly do. Um, I have high expectations for them, but I don't think they're going to be uh, quite that good. I think just about 10 and seven is right about right. I do have a floor of five and 12. Again, I don't think they're going to be this bad, but like if they really come out and flopped, as Dan Snyder teams have a habit of doing, um, they could be. Uh, pretty bad, but I don't see us doing worse than 5-12 and 12 at very worst. Um, so yeah, as I said, it's the highest ceiling, actually, of any of the teams here. So um, it's very unlikely we're going to hit this high, but it's also very unlikely we're going to flop. I think we'll be right around in the middle. And the only reason I have this high of a ceiling, and uh, maybe, and spoiler alert, I'm about to do the Cowboys. They're also 10-7. and The um, only reason I have them the same as the Cowboys, not necessarily because I think the two teams are on par, although I, I think they're close, but the Commanders are tied, actually, for the first easiest strength of schedule. I don't remember who they're tied with, but they have a pretty easy schedule. Based on last year's records, at least. Moving on to the Cowboys, I have a 10-7 and record for the uh, Stars. 10-7, and 13-4 and as their stealing, and then a floor of 7-10. and 10. Um, I do think they'll more than likely be good, but I don't think they'll be great. That's kind of the Cowboy way. Be decent, but not really good or great. Although this year I have it slightly different, actually. I do think they'll do well at 10-7, and 7, just not maybe as good as they did last year. Um, they do have the highest floor of any team, though, as I did give them a floor of just 7-10. and 10. So it could potentially, if the NFC is, um, NFC is weak, maybe it's weak in the playoffs even with a floor. Although I really thought it was more like 8-9. and nine. But um, I do have a 7-10 and 10 floor because I went through the schedule, picked all the games I thought they could lose. But I think it, I think their floor is more like 8-9, and nine, but I have it as 7-10, and 10, and I'm sticking with that for now. Uh, okay, we have a three-way tie in the NFC East. The Eagles, who I think are going to do really well this year, unless they have a really down, disappointing year, also going 10-7. and 7. A 14-3 and 3 ceiling, but a 4-13 and 13 floor. I think the Eagles 
are a bit of a boomer bust team. They could do really good, they could do really bad, but I also kind of have them going somewhere in the middle, hence the 10-7 and 7 record. They could almost be a super team, I certainly hope not, um, but they could also disappoint massively, and if they were to do as bad as 4-13, and 13, which I think is a remote possibility as their floor, um, that would be very disappointing to their fans. I would be surprised, just not exactly shocked. So we'll get more to the three-way tie in a minute. And then, of course, we have the Giants. The Giants are... You know, they had a good draft. I think that's going to be the high point for them until next offseason. Um, I do have a 3-14 and 14 record for them. I was struggling to find games I think the Giants were going to win. Not only do I not think they're going to be great, their schedule is not the easiest. I do have a 7-10 and 10 ceiling for them, which is actually the Cowboys' floor. Um, yeah, the only team here whose ceiling is a losing record and uh, actually, none of the teams even have a record. That'd be a losing record. So the Giants, yeah, don't have high expectations for them. But maybe, they, maybe they'll surprise. I think if any part of their team can be pretty good, it'll be their defense. And I do have a floor for them of one and fifteen. I, I don't think that the Giants really are going to be that good. I do think the Giants could potentially go like completely defeated. However, I. Something in me just says the Giants can be that team that doesn't quite go completely defeated, and they're going to find a way to get one win in there somewhere. Maybe a garbage game, but one win nonetheless. They do have the lowest record, floor, and ceiling in the division. They could be decent, but I don't have much faith in any of the team, and especially not fifth-year quarterback now, Daniel Jones. So, now to our three-way tie. Eagles, Cowboys, Commanders, all with 10-7 and seven records. Here's what I had to do. I went to see, you know, division games, because that's that's generally the tiebreaker. Well, I found the Cowboys, I predicted with a 4-2 and two record, the Redskins, the Commanders, with a 4-2 and two record, and the Eagles, with a 4-2 and two record in the division. I couldn't believe it, how it was how it was working out, and so, let me just say, too, um, I'm not sure if I got all these games right as far as looking back at them, because I had to look back at them several times when I was trying to match up all the games and tiebreakers and stuff, so I may have forgotten some stuff and accidentally switched some games around. I'm not the most organized when it comes to making these videos, so I hope I'm not messing this up completely. But I do know the next tiebreaker, at least last time I checked, was um, conference games. The Eagles were actually last in those, 7-5 and five in conference games. The Commanders were next, 7-6 and six in conference games. So just a half game. No, hold up, hold up. I just found a mistake, boys. So, they're actually worse. The Commanders seven and six in conference games. Eagles go seven and five, so they be number two. But regardless, the Cowboys do win the division, even though they all tie with division games, all tie with records. They have an eight and five conference record. So I have the Dallas Cowboys winning the NFC East by um, a conference tiebreaker, although I do think Cowboys, Commanders, Eagles will all be playoff teams. Uh, could very well be, at least in these way-too-early predictions. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, the NFC least just a couple years ago could be the NFC uh, one of the best. Yes, I know that was bad. But anyway, I want you to know, let me know what you think. Run down in the comments, let me know what you think the records will be for the NFC East teams. Let me know, um, as always, thank you for watching. Very soon, not sure when yet exactly, but I'm going to releasing a, be releasing a part two to my commander, uh, yeah, commander's rebuild that I released just the other day on the channel. There will be a uh, uh, card for that popping up on the screen. You can click if you're interested in checking that out. It was a very fun Madden rebuild, and there's actually going to be a part two coming for that. You will not want to miss it. Some awesome stuff uh, going on in Madden. But anyway, thank you so much for watching, everyone. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video. I'm the Vice Fan. I'm out of here. See you later.